I'm Ryan. Welcome to Bible at the Beach. Today we're going to be in Philippians chapter 2, verses 19 through 30. Glad you can be with me today. Paul writes, Yet I'm trusting in the Lord Jesus that I may send Timothy to you soon, so I now can be refreshed when I find out how you are doing. Timothy is like no other. He carries the same passion for your welfare that I carry in my heart. So, Timothy was one of Paul's favorites. Now, we're not supposed to have favorites, but uh, we do. <laughs> and uh, maybe not maybe not that word, uh, but Paul really loved Timothy, mostly because he was sincere, <clears throat> humble, capable, faithful. And, you know, look, when you're sincere and you're humble and you're faithful and you're capable, man, it's really hard not to win fans along the way. <clears throat> Those are some of the old school virtues that really help you accelerate in your life. Again, I'll say them, you know, it's being loyal, being humble, being sincere, uh, being faithful. Those are the character traits that really help you win friends along the way. Timothy had that in spades, and that's why Paul left so much responsibility in his, in his lap, because he knew he could handle it. <clears throat> And he knew he would model Paul's values to new people. So Paul then says, For it seems as though everyone else <clears throat> is busy seeking what is best for themselves instead of the things that are most important to our Lord Jesus. Well, that hasn't changed from the second he wrote this thousands of years ago to today. Paul says, Everyone else seems to be busy seeking what is best for themselves. Well, that's true. That's an honest assessment of the time that Paul lived. That's an honest assessment of pretty much how things are now. So you're always looking for those character traits in other people that is really other-centered, really trying to help others, really trying to counsel others, really trying to give other people wisdom. And it's a slow grind to show your long-term uh, skill of just thinking about other people. Um, <clears throat> sad news is, is that every year, the selfish, self-centered people, they fall off a little bit. And you learn over time who's got the goods to go the distance. And it comes back to being sincere, being loyal, being faithful, being humble. <clears throat> so we should navigate always to those values. He says in verse 22, you already know about his excellent reputation since he has served alongside me as a loyal son in the work of the ministry. So his reputation went ahead of him. <clears throat> um, after I see what transpires with me, he's, d he's the one I will send to you to bless you. And I'm entrusting in my Lord to return to you in due time. So Paul just saw this chapter of his life in the prison cell as just an opportunity to share what God had done with the prisoners, with the prison guard, with the people around him. <clears throat> he prospered in the place he was planted. It's the key, one of the keys to our life is that we prosper in the place that we're planted. In this chapter, Paul's planted in a prison. In other chapters of his life, he was planted in the palace, in a place that was easier than the current circumstance that he found himself in. The Bible teaches to prosper where you're planted, not to rush the process of the part of your life that you don't like. So if you have patience, you practice patience, you believe in God's purpose in your life, even working through patience in places that you don't like, you'll really see your life open up and you'll really see your life be very very fruitful. So don't run from difficulty. Embrace it. Allow it to change you for God's glory. <clears throat> now he says, <clears throat> after I see what transpires with me, send him to you. But for now, I feel a stirring in my heart to send Epaphroditus back to you immediately. He's a friend to me and a wonderful brother and fellow soldier who's worked with me as we serve as ministers of the gospel. And you sent him as your apostle to minister to me in my need, but now he's grieved to know that you found out he had been sick, so he longs to return uh, and comfort you in this. So there's a human side to life and relationships and ministry, and a lot of it just works through personal relationships. 
Epaphroditus had spent time with Paul, spent time with the church in Philippi. It was a back and forth nature to their relationship. Very, very common as we live our lives today because God always works through relationships. That's why the Bible says for us to love God, for us to love people, our relationship with God, our relationship with people, and this tension, this back and forth uh, between the two. <clears throat> it says in verse 27, it's true. <clears throat> he almost died, but God showed him mercy and healed him. And I'm so thankful to God for his healing as I was spared from having the sorrow of losing him on top of all of my other troubles. Boy, Paul had wave after wave after wave of difficulty and despair, and yet somehow he endured. <clears throat> He says in verse 28, so you can see why I'm delighted to send him to you. Now I know that you're anxious to see him and to rejoice in his healing. And it encourages me to know how happy you'll be to have him back. So Paul's energy and momentum in life came from the people that he saw God working in and through in his midst. It was the Epaphroditus, Silas. It was Paul. Long list of people that Paul was encouraged by that kept him going <clears throat> through the different times in his life he says so warmly welcome him in the Lord with joyous love and esteem him highly for people like him deserve it so you'll notice that there'll be a special regard and esteem you'll give for people that have earned it spiritually I use the word respect you should respect people that have earned their spiritual stripes and haven't quit and haven't quit old school respect because of me he put his life on the line despising the danger so that he could provide for me with what you couldn't since you were so far away and he did all of this because of his ministry for Christ so this is pretty cool just some relational words from Paul today talking about Timothy talking about Epaphroditus and the impact that we can have on one another in the interpersonal relationships that we have. You know, God works through them every single day. Be encouraged. Don't give up on the people around you because God never gave up on you. It's a good word for today. And, you know, as always, may God give us the eyes to see. May he give us the ears to hear. May he give us the heart to feel so we can be who he wants us to be today. In Jesus' name. Till next time, have a beautiful day.